have to wait 11 <laughs> seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Game of Goons and another episode of Rambling On. So, first of all, oh, Santos can't make it today, so we have Dan, Hi. Grant, and Wong. What's up? Hello. Cool. But, um, we'll just check how everyone's doing in the lockdown. I think we're in week three now. I've lost all track of time. So. I believe it's week four. Week four. Week, week four. four I want to say it's week, week this is the very start of week four. Yes. I've lost a week somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Just blurred into one. It's actually the day of the first day of the lockdown. Well at least it feels like it sometimes. Mm. That's true actually. <laughs> no, it's good to see everyone's healthy. No, it's so good. A bit boring. Yeah, I think we're all getting a bit cabin fever now, aren't we? So yeah. seeping in. I know. I can... Everyone's gone to... Especially when the weather's been... Sorry, Karen. No, so I was just saying the weather's been especially nice as well, which is always harder. Yeah, <laughs> I've got, got the balcony, so that's not too bad. Hang out the window. <laughs> but, we don't condone that. Yeah, yeah, be safe. And that does not mean hang out the balcony. <laughs> or, you... <laughs> or you will be in hospital, and that's not good. Um, so the topic we had last week, if Gran um, come up with it, I believe. So if you want to um, introduce. Yeah, that's funny. It, it, it's more to do with um, other video games or, or game series that either have been made into films or TV series, or you'd like to see maybe made. Oh, perfect. So you mean like um, like The Witcher on Netflix is was a get well was a book series and a game or make it as a show it don't have to be a movie for like oh yeah, yeah yeah video to to actual show or real life for like that real life action yeah real life show okay because there's so many i think they because like uh, aren't they doing like a last of us in hbo was it yeah other streaming service available can you make a tv out of it i don't know if that's going to be good though like that's that's a hard game to you, make. You've kind of got to pick and choose carefully. Which you can get away with it because, like you said, it's book series as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last time I checked, Last of Us is not a book series. No, no. Or, it... or the very least, the games came first. I'm pretty sure the Witcher books came before the game. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Well, I might be wrong. No, no, you're correct. You're correct. Um, the the Witcher game was based on is like the is is it? It's not really a sequel, but it's like a follow on from the books. Yeah, it's from the book. Oh, see, you know, I know. I don't. I haven't read the book, but like, I knew that it's, it's got. A, they got a lot, like, kind of material to work with, into like an actual TV series. Same as like Game of Thrones, like you know those kind of thing that they got. Like, obviously, they got the book, so back them up. So it's like they got a bunch of kind of material to work with. Yeah, so much lore and stuff. But I think, but I think that is kind of maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I, I think that it's kind of hindered The Witcher a little bit because I feel like they tried to cram too much of the lore in the first season as more of a setup for following seasons rather than trying to like focus on. They're trying to like world build in the first series, so it all felt very like too much to take in in one go. In, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Exposition heavy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's good. Yeah, and I think you're right when you've got a, a world that's so like rich in character and, and history, to get that all across so that the viewers understand, it, it can be quite difficult. Yeah, you've got to make it engaging though, as well, because it's a t- bear in mind it's a TV series, so it's not a game. People aren't going to spend, well, they'll spend a long time playing it, but then they're, they're not um, watching it, sorry. <laughs> but it's, but they'll be You'd have a, a similar problem with, like, um, Skyrim or the other Elder Scrolls games uh, there's too much lore to be able to fit into a TV show or a film yeah that's very true yeah exactly and that's like the point I'm trying to make yeah you're correct and like you can include like some good moments in, in from like Skyrim and stuff and but then it'll never it'll never satisfy everyone and that's the only problem I think with games like heavy on lore yeah 
Yeah, and I, and I think as well, like for those sorts of, well, I guess it's more limited to fantasy games where, well, in a game you explore that world at your own pace, take it in slowly. Whereas on a TV series, you're limited to the forty minutes airtime. So yeah, you're right; you have to squeeze an awful lot more. But in the same time, they've got a lot more deeper kind of things to go around to build kind of each character or the storyline or what that they're trying to build or they you know to build up on that but i guess obviously it's different tv and movie but that's that's one thing i like about tv because that is built up with all those different things into like a final moment or like a, a something as you mean like you have like a decent pacing like mm-hmm. it's it it reaches a point in a fairly progressive rate. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. I think, knows. But, but then that's what worries me about Last of Us. So I, I think they'll struggle to get the pace in, in the TV series right mm-hmm. and focus enough on the character interaction between um, Joe and Ellie, the two main characters. Because mm-hmm. that has to be... The chemistry has to be perfect. I, I don't know. I To be honest, I think if... If obviously I'm not I'm not a writer, but like if I, how I would do it, I won't even have. I might have Ellie. I might have Joe, or, or just I would just talk first season. I would just talking about one person. I won't I won't start making them two or talking about them two, but in a different way. You know, like you see a movie or you see some some TV they does it. It's like they're talking about two different story. Oh, but okay. They, they happen. They happen. Maybe not even in the same timeline, but like they happen in their own story. So it's a her story mm-hmm. and his story, and then they might come by. And just basically, it's kind of like how witches does it. You know, they're talking about each story, but all all on their own kind of storyline and timeline. So it's like. At the end of it, or like, you know, maybe end of season one or end of season two, that they might join them all together. So I, I feel like that's something like this. It's kind of like you know, the... yeah, you tr- you try and build up to the point where they meet, rather than trying to build Straight from where to they the point, have yeah. met. Effectively, them. if you if you do it from before they meet, rather than because once if you have it once uh, Joel and Ellie meet, then you've got the game's plot in TV form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I was thinking, if they did the plot, it wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to do it justice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the other thing you got to take into account with games and things is who do you cast? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because I've ju- mm. I've just pulled up the Last of Us on Wikipedia, and it's like um, Ellie's casting. Ellie is voiced by Ashley Johnson, who is a voice actress. Yeah, primarily a voice actress and yeah, podcast. Um, and- and D&D, D&D player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that I think that's where most nerds know her from these days. Um, but I mean, she does she does have like films to her name. Yeah, she does. Like, she does like she, she was in the stuff. Avengers. Yeah, she's well. Other she, major comic book films are available. She was she was a waitress. She was a waitress yeah. in the Avengers. Well, that's the thing. Much. She yeah. had a very small <laughs> role in it. A waitress. Do you, do you, yeah, but do you know her role was actually supposed to be bigger? She, she was supposed. Yeah, to be yeah, I did. I did hear about that. Sharon Carter, which is Peggy Carter's nephew. Grand, grand. Uh, nephew, niece. Sorry. Nephew, <laughs> niece, nephew, <laughs> niece, and they Become wrote her out. now. Yeah, yeah, it's changed now. <laughs> no, they wrote her out, and I was like, oh, okay, but she's quite a good actress. Yeah, she's in um, Blind Spot as well. Other TV shows are available. Yeah, and I, you, you've got that, and, she, and in her case, like she's got some films, she's got some television credentials, but not every voice actor does. No. So but a lot true. of the voice actors generally also provide these days, at least, motion capture for the people they voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you then end up with people who look like the voice actors and. You you cast if you cast them as someone else, you're going to have some people who are like, okay, sure, that could work. You're going to have the people who are absolutely hating it because it's not it's not the right people, and then you're going to have the people who just um, haven't heard of any of these people anyway, so it doesn't matter. But hmm. if you've I... got that group of people who are unhappy about it and they're too big, and in the case of the internet, 
that group normally is too big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it, and I think especially with games as well, there's there's I I don't know why, but there seems to be a lot more followings in games. If that makes sense, maybe it reaches a wider audience. But like... I think the the audience is just more well noticed because, especially by us, because of course we keep an eye on it, but also yeah, they're yeah. the most verbal on the internet. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I was going to say, they shout the loudest. <laughs> uh, yeah. You can hear them. <laughs> it's not but a you're right. thing, though. <laughs> that could potentially... What's the, I can't really think of the word for it, but maybe not ruin a show, but... Yeah, derail it. You know, yeah, derail it. Like the, the network might not pick up for a second season if the, the I guess the, the fan outrage is, is too big. Yeah. Yeah, that can make or break a show now, can't it? Because like shows will get cancelled and then be revived because of so many fans petitioning for it to come back. Yeah, uh, there was a, a a DC animated show, I think, that got not only got revived, but got revived as a more not I'm not going to say adult show, but certainly aimed at a slightly older audience. I think it was I don't think it was Teen Titans, but it was still like the sidekicks. Yeah, because uh, of the main heroes, but the the they cancelled it after two series and then brought it back as a third series, but more more mature for the original fans who'd been campaigning to have it brought back. Oh, okay. Okay. It does sound but, like Teen Titans, though. Because that used to be, yeah, like, when we were kids, it used to have, like, a really... It's more a teenager kind of one. And then Yeah, the, well, the thing is, nowadays, Teen Titans, as far as I know, isn't. <laughs> yeah, but it does sound like that sort of thing, when they but then bring it back for the more mature audience that was enjoying that kind of show in the, originally. Yeah. I think the main issue is a lot of people, particularly parents, but not just parents, a lot of people think <laughs> of... They, they hear video games and their instinctive first thought is stuff for Man kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's I'm stuff for kids. Stuff it's kids. it's <laughs> stuff for kids or... Manhunt. No, no in just, between. Look, okay, <laughs> let's face okay, it. Like, okay, manhunt is slightly different. So just think of like something like GTA. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, and, it's just a good example. And The Witcher as well, and like they're not suitable for kids. Yeah, like, the it, Witcher but, show is certainly not suitable for kids. But, but it was never parents supposed are just to gonna be. Hear, but parents are going to hear video game and think. Kids oh, it's fine, that. and then, <laughs> and then, and then, they, then you've got the outrage of parents who aren't happy that their kids are being exposed to. Pretty sure, if I remember correctly, the first episode of Witcher has some like, has a fair bit of nudity involved. Uh, um, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> I hope that's okay to mention in the podcast. It's fine. Yeah, you can say it's fine. You can say that. You're just commenting on. Yeah. On and that, that. Right. that's fine. <laughs> that for in a lot of parents, a lot for a lot of parents, that's not something they want to expose their kids to. No, which makes sense. But then, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I think that's the case with like a lot of things now, like Netflix and games and stuff. It's so accessible that yeah. age ratings kind of gone out the window anyway. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I ended up with a copy of an Assassin's Creed game when I was like thirteen or fourteen. It, it's an eighteen game. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and just because I asked for it, my mum trusted me not to be asking for stuff I shouldn't be playing. <laughs> that was a mistake on her part. <laughs> <laughs> to all mums out there. Yeah. But, yeah. Which does actually... What did people think of the Assassin's Creed film? The, I think it was Michael Fassbender. I was Fassbender. about to say, I was about to say, mm. before you guys even talking about The Last of Us, I feel like it, it was... It, okay, first of all, I think it's a mistake. They're making it as a movie i think it will be much more suitable for tv agreed agreed um i like the casting though the casting was decent um the movie um mm. it's okay it's not yeah. like i was like i would probably give it four or five out of ten um i mean i i, I don't know I, I, don't, I think the thing that ruined that was they tried to put too much into the plot so that they they had the Assassin's Creed plot and stuff, and then at the end they're like, "Well, actually, no. We need to make this uh, like world build, um, so we can include all like the apples of Eden and the artifacts." So they can't. Yeah. I, I felt that bit at the end felt kind of tacked on because yeah. it wasn't where they're going originally. They thought, well, "We need to make this into a franchise." And that I got, I got kind of thrown off because I, I'm expect, I was expecting um, Desmond Miles and Altair, and <laughs> we got neither of those two because yeah. I, I had missed the memo where it wasn't focusing on the actual games; it was just 
a real based imagined. on the games. But I think that's okay. I think it's okay to focus on a different character, but it was just the the whole world building aspect felt too forced. Yeah. And that's what ruined it for me. Like, uh, like I think like what what one was saying, if that was a TV show, you could build into that, and that would have yeah. worked there as a Netflix series or something like that. The thing is, if you have a TV show, then what you could do is focus slightly more on the the more modern side of Assassin's Creed, but from the perspective of the assassins, because from what I've seen, there's a lot more focus on modern day Templars than modern day assassins. Yes, it's true. Yeah, yeah. but it... and I, I want to hear more about how assassins are present in modern day. But maybe that's just me. No, but it, that's but that's no. I, I was I was still looking forward to like where that they would make us sequel or not. Uh, I don't think they will now. <laughs> no. It's been a while. Uh, it seems unlikely. Yeah. Didn't make as much money as they hoped. But like, like it was a good, it was a well-made film in terms. Of, apart from the the plot in in the right. I don't know. I won't say the two um, key components in a film. Yeah, yeah all the stunts. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I sim- don't know. The cinematography was good. The stunts were good. The stunts were real. They used real stunts and real free running. Yeah, but that everyone. I mean, like you know, well done to the stunt actor and actress, but like. Yeah, yeah. And won't really plot. change. I mean, those, <laughs> but but the, but those things won't really make. No, no. Like if you say, "Oh, those are real thing," and then it won't make the ticket go up. It won't make people say, "Oh, let's go to see." I mean, even Jackie Chan, although he's done all this stuff, yes, he's you know impressing. He done all this stuff, but like people do see it because of him, yes. But like also see the the story and then see the, everything. So not just particularly just one small thing. No, no, no. I, know. Yeah, like, I think it's the Story Kung Fu important. Panda series that has Jackie Chan in it. Uh, and it is, I think. The fir- in the first film, I think he's got like five lines. <laughs> so they basically <laughs> cast him so they can put his name on the poster. <laughs> but I don't. Yeah. I, I have a funny feeling that he, like his name isn't the reason pe- that they got two more films out of that series. And- no, no, no. That was that was the writing because the writing is good for that. Yeah, and, and and maybe the casting of Jack Black as Poe, but uh, yeah, he's got the charm, I think. But I think they toned down Jack Black for that film. Probably. And that's saying a lot because he's not really that toned down. <laughs> Which film are you talking about? Kung Fu Panda. Oh, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda, Panda oh, okay. series. <laughs> Which incidentally oh, yeah. was made into games. So was it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They had like. I even got that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the game's like, but. I played it. Decent? Uh, well, I guess for kids, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's okay. I mean, I play it for a couple of hours. Um, no, no, it's a relaxing game. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. But my point is that some games that are like you like have really successful films like that, and then they get made into games, but the games are absolutely atrocious because they're just t- tacked on to try and make some money yeah, off the franchise. Just want to make money on it. Yeah. yeah. It's when a game creates a game that's tacked onto the franchise that you've got to be worried. What, what now, I, he- I heard about this. I heard about this <laughs> recently. Now, I heard about this quite recently. Turns out, in in I think like two thousand and five, Bethesda released two mobile Skyrim games. Well, not Skyrim, Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Sorry, they released played, two mobile I, Elder Scrolls. I played games. one of those. But this was 2005. Okay. This isn't like an iPhone or the smartphones are available. Like, it's not that kind of game. It's a brick phone game. It's oh, like really? Snake or Tetris. Ooh. It would be that kind of game. Kind of eight bit side scroller. They, 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 they basically they basically released these games just so they're they're getting a bit of extra market. When was the original it's, Skyrim released? Let me check. Skyrim was released in 2011. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Oblivion was like 2008, I think. Yes, and they're basically pretty much the same. Well, no, I, I shouldn't say that. I, they're I'll... not pretty much the same game, <laughs> to my knowledge. That, that's going to upset not. a lot of people if you say I, that. I was going to say that, and then I realised that's, that's a bad joke to make. <laughs> the the, the one community you don't piss off, yeah, gamers. Even if it's a joke, that's it. <laughs> We're destroyed as a channel. <laughs> No, it's crazy when, because you do get that though. You have like um, 
different spin-offs. So like Fall like Fallout as well was um I think the same company. And they Oh uh, yeah, Fallout's Professor as well. They had three and then they had like New Vegas and, and spin offs until they had Fallout Four. Yeah. But they didn't they didn't make that into a game a film. I think they were always talking about it, but they never did. Yeah, I think Fallout would probably work slightly better than the Elder Scrolls, but I can't. I can't as really speak for. I, yeah, as a film, I can't really speak for Fallout. I'm not sure. I haven't played the series. Um, let me and I've only clearly, cl- really played Skyrim, hence why I always call the entire Elder Scrolls series Skyrim. Yeah, yeah. I think. Which is, <laughs> which is on my, which is a, a fault on me. Yeah. <laughs> I really shouldn't do it, but I can't break the habit now. I did the same actually. It's dear. It's just the name that stick, isn't it? I, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You no, know I just don't. Those games, I, I mean, like I love open world game. I like those game. I love it, but I never really thought of they in like turn into a movie. Like I like I just I don't even have a thought saying that oh that would be a good idea. That I don't think it's a good idea at all. Or to have a really open world like Fallout into a movie. I think it would feel very yeah. like Mad Maxi. It's not even Mad Max. Yeah, but Mad Max at least like you got a storyline, right? And then, but the the thing is, Skyrim's storyline like you got obviously you got the main story like you know you know you kill the dragon and stuff. But like, I think it's such a so massive, just like GTA. It's so massive that you. Hard is quite hard. It's quite hard to kind of direct the you know yeah the people I... watching it into so, something. So what about like a game like um, Uncharted? Because that's like a more story driven game. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think so, like, you that know, would work better? For sure. Uncharted I mean, we've had definitely. Several like Tomb Raider movie. films, haven't we? Yeah, we've had three now. The two originals, which is like I don't know when, with Angelina oh, yeah. Jolie, and then yeah, yeah with Angelina Jolie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Angelina Jolie, that's right. And then you've got the new oh. one with um, yeah. what's the name? Alicia um, Vikan. Yeah, 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 that's it. So the new one was quite yes. good though. I quite enjoyed the new. Loads of people film. saying got some bad review. Loads of people saying that. Yeah, they got some bad review. I thought it was better. Like the newer one was more focused and and felt more like the the game than. The original yeah. did. The original one. Actually, I was, my, yeah, I see what you mean, actually. I think the original ones were more... Cart- not a cartoony, but you're right, video game-like, in the sense that they... Oh, she really wouldn't do that. And it's, you know, it's quite outlandish. And, mm-hmm. Whereas so, this is the stunts. But... Sometimes kind of unrealistic. Some, yeah, that's what, unrealistic, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a... sorry, did you just call a film based on a video game unrealistic. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. gonna call you out on that because that's just the worst thing to say. But you can add realism to games though, like uh, to films. So, sorry. It's, it's it not to be even unrealistic. Like... It's not even okay, maybe unrealistic is the wrong word. It's the sound <laughs> isn't such a big word, right? You know, unrealistic. Maybe another word, but like sometimes you have that moment you just kinda of feel like Come on, I, I'm like you must be a Superman. You must be like some sort of like superhero. How how can how come say like, ten people shooting at you using machine gun and then like you didn't even got a scratch? One, one, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you goes like I don't know. Didn't get injured. Yeah, you feel like you feel unimmersed. Maybe is the word. Yeah, because that's that's why like like those old double seven, you know. Like in the nineties, like sometimes when I watch it, I was like, I don't know. It's like I feel like sometimes a bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> so the new one is fine, like you know. Yeah, you just want a bit more like realism. But it, that's what the new Tomb Raider's like that though. She gets like injured, she gets beaten up a lot, and like actually comes in with a few scratches rather than just like, nah, I've walked through like this. No, I feel like the new one still got that, still yeah. got that kind of moment <laughs> at some point. Fair enough. <laughs> it has just occurred to me we're, we're talking about all these like games into films and TV shows and things like that, and we haven't actually once brought up the. I'm not going to say the thing that started it all, mm-hmm. but probably the biggest TV series based on a game. 
Yeah, which to... is Pokemon. That's actually yeah. really true. Oh, yeah. but they got they got movie though. Why didn't we have a, like, they've they got, got a lot of movies. movies. Yeah. They've had movies since I think two thousand, and the show started a few years before that. Yeah, true. Like, it's and, they... and it's still going now. So. And they they do have a live movie. I mean, yeah, like, they've got oh, Detective, Detective Pikachu, Pikachu as well. Detective Pikachu, oh, which yeah, actually wasn't I mean, too bad. Well, well, it could have been better. What do you but guys it think? What do you guys think? Because I haven't seen that. It's for a Pokemon for a live action Pokemon game. They've done quite well with the Pokemon. It, I know the trailers look weird and the CGI look weird, but it's not bad actually. It's done well. The the story could be a bit more honed. But it's not bad. It's like a decent film. Yeah, I guess so. And it, it tries to bring in the, which again, one thing the series never really, well, not that I know, of addresses. But it's the ethics of of keeping Pokemon. You know, okay. making them battle, and it, it's it's not that deep. Don't worry. It's not. It's not like a political film. I was about to say this is deep, especially for Pokemon. The deepest Pokemon got was black and white. Yeah, and yeah. they kind of did away with that by the end of the by the end of the game. <laughs> but the thing, the villain wasn't really a villain in that game. It was just like, well, well... one of them wasn't. The other one was just yeah, your stereotypical yeah. wants to take over the world guy. Yeah, yeah. And the other and one, one was of... like generally had some depth. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I still, I still support the view that Black and White was basically Game Freak's middle finger at Peter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, not not against some anyone named Peter. Peter. If your name if your name's Peter, I'm sure you're a lovely person. I mean the organisation. <laughs> a lot of people are going, Who's Peter? Who's Peter? Not... What have I done? How have I upset this guy? <laughs> I mean I'm thing. just covering my bases. <laughs> no, I don't even mean. Since since we're talking about Pokemon, what about Sonic? I haven't seen it. I don't know. I haven't seen it. All I know about Sonic is it's the, one of the few films where the the internet managed to get the developers to change how it looked. But di- they did that very quick, mm. though. Like, like way too quick for CGI. CGI doesn't take that quick. That is that true. A... There was wasn't there like a theory that they um they deliberately released that trailer to cause the outrage or something? Oh, I guess to get a bit of to get more, yeah, yeah to get the publicity towards mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I can't comment, obviously, because we can't comment because we don't really know. Yeah. Um, I just felt like, well, if the fans did it, well done for them. But I just felt like that that turnaround for that that change was so quick that if the like if the CGI wasn't done before, they had a lot of people working very hard to get that done, or they already had a sort of backup model in case the it didn't go down well. It could be a case of one of the animators had taken matters into his own hands because he knew it would flop or something like that. Like the animators might have known. Yeah, exactly. And, and to be honest, they did hire the um. So after they <laughs> after the animation flopped, <laughs> they hired the the director of the Sonic animated series to come into the game. Okay. So the, the director of the animated series to come into the game to direct the um like the character design. So they that might got... have had something to do with it because he might have had access to old assets and things. Well, he did. So he was he was the one that created the. So in like one of the first games, it's like a cutscene or something, and um, I, I, and then apparently he designed the animated cutscene and part of okay. the animated series, and they they they're getting actual directors in to do it, <laughs> <laughs> like animated directors, which they've done before as well, and they've had some directors now that have done like um like real film directors direct games as well which is interesting hmm. my it's, thing it's, uh, yeah. now is they've done live action Pokemon they've done live action Sonic I'm waiting for the because I know they've already done one before that flopped well and truly the live action Mario game yeah, have you seen the have you seen the live action? I have Mario? not, and I've deliberately not watched it, no, so as I don't it's, ruin. It's bad. It's bad, but it's worth a watch because it's 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 so bad. It's good. Does that make sense? It's got a cult following. Yeah. Because it's so bad, <laughs> and you have to watch it because like it's it's unbelievable. I don't know how to explain. <laughs> don't don't if I remember from that film. And again, it's a very long time ago. I might, I might be confusing details, but isn't it like lizard people that get their heads shrunk? No, they're the Goombas. 
Are they Goombas? So, the, oh, so okay. the, the Goombas <laughs> are, are humanoid six foot lizard people that get the head shrunk. And that's, and how, they, that's how they turn into Goombas. <laughs> You see, you can tell that I've never watched the film because normally I'm not speechless when I hear things like that. <laughs> Knowing it's based on Mario, I am, and I'm not really sure what to make of this revelation. No, that's, <laughs> but that's just one part of the film. I think, yeah, just the one bit I remember from the film. It's, al- it's also set I don't know what this out, though. It's also set in a sci fi setting. In, like, a dystopian future. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, I've seen like I've seen a lot of stuff online of um, like fan-made Mario trailers that are usually done in the start, like in the idea of a, a Mario, a Mario-esque Fast and Furious. Yeah, but uh, like even <laughs> even that's bad in than this film. <laughs> yeah, well that's the thing. Like they look like you could actually make a reasonable film out of them. You you can and and like this guy's like he's played Mario Kart on or Mario not even Mario Kart he's just played Mario for like five minutes gone I get it let's make the make the game <laughs> and everything about it is just so far removed from the games apart from the fact they're plumbers and in green cool costumes Mario. except <laughs> how often do we actually see them do any plumbing in the games uh, yeah. that's just a kind of vague backstory to make them seem a little more normal. <laughs> I think, to be honest, like the the I think the actors like it's Bob Hoskin and um, John Le- Legazimo. Is that his name? Oh yeah, I don't mean uh, Tibbles. I Tibbles from Romeo Sid- and Juliet, or Sid the S- or Sloth. Sid Sid the Sloth. Yeah, and, and to be honest, they're they're the best things about about it. The actors are like at the time were really like high paid actors, and they did the best they could with the script, but the script was awful. And so was the film. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> and us. Moving on. Is anyone got any other games that think? <laughs> or any games they want to see as films? Uh, Metal Gear. No, okay. Yeah, I think Gear that'll work as a film. I think that'll work quite well as a film, to be honest, Metal Gear. Yeah. But you'd have to know, but people have to know. Like, because Metal Gear has like the element of being a bit like tongue in cheek and a bit weird at times. Yeah. Well, if it's tongue in cheek, then it has to be a British film because generally the British films <laughs> do the tongue in cheek quite well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's no, offense, no, no offense to any Americans, but I found that British films tend to do tongue in cheek humour better. Yeah, no. I, I think there's some good films that do it, but like. Yeah, like what? Tra- like, yeah. I was yeah. just thinking about like, don't call me exam. out on it don't call me out on it um, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong maybe okay, I'm wrong move. come back to me come back to me in like free okay. podcast time I, I, I come back to you <laughs> I can't think of one on top of my head actually Deadpool is kind of tongue in cheek in the sense that it breaks the fourth wall it doesn't take stuff too seriously maybe in that sense yeah that's quite that's a good I, example but it's just very weird. American. But I, me, I think that's American an aspect movie. of Deadpool being Deadpool because he's known for breaking the fourth wall. It's kind of, True, it's yeah. effectively one of his superpowers is the ability to break the fourth wall. It's part it's of him as a character. Yeah, yeah. it's who he is, yeah. even in the comics. So, and granted, the sense. comics were written by an American, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. We'll, we'll say that. That's what, that's what the Americans will get. <laughs> they get Deadpool. They'll get Deadpool. <laughs> we'll get everything else. <laughs> I think that's a fair deal. <laughs> I, I, I don't think this is a fair conversation to have without an American presence. And no, true. I mean, true. I mean, maybe we could com- talk Robin into getting his brother involved in this, because I think his brother lives in Texas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> might, might, like, he but, might not be American, but he might know an American who wants to join in. <laughs> Or we, or we somehow managed to talk a major American YouTuber into this. That'd be amazing if we could do that. But <laughs> What's think... Rooster Teeth's email address? <laughs> Other American YouTubers are available. We can try it. We'll just email them after and see what happens. Probably yeah, no response. Send emails out to all the American YouTubers and see what, what they see if any of them respond. Yeah. What do people think about... So they're doing an Uncharted film and they've cast Tom Holland as Nathan Drake in Uncharted so like the main lead what do people think of that? 
Hang on, I've never played Uncharted, so I'm going to have to pull up a picture of Nathan Drake. Uh, yeah, Google um, Nathan Drake first, then Google Tom Holland. I know what Tom Holland looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's um, ever watched a Marvel film knows what Tom Holland looks like these days. He's always in the suit, though, what do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they're obviously going for you. Younger version of the character. Yeah, that's what they say, right? Yeah, that's but they're going for a younger version. And I don't know if that's going to take away some of the aspect of like him being like a... Like the cast number four. So this did like Uncharted. This is the... I think it's the second script that's been sent to a studio. They did one a while back. And the people that were slated for that was... Um, Mark Wahlberg was commissioned for the project. Mm-hmm. And he looks closer to like the adult version. You know, um, I, I I can't I can't imagine my Rupert be, being Nathan Drake. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I've just maybe Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy will work, I think. I think yeah, I think Tom work. Hardy would work quite. Well. He's a bit more like of a pointed face rather than yeah, but he's square. Got the... But <laughs> yeah, but he's got the right. He's definitely got more the right build. Tom Tom Holland is. I guess small, not just in height, but just in general slim. build. Yeah. yeah, but if I think they're yeah. going for like a younger version, and I don't know if that will work, to be honest. Yeah, that. But if that talking about yeah, the script was talking about it's not even in the. It's like a brand new script, so it's not about the game anymore. Like it's like not part of like one, two, three, four. It's just so it's like a brand new stuff. Yeah, obviously using the that character. But yeah. Like, yeah. Talking about a new adventure when he was young, or something, or that in between, because obviously, like at this point, the game haven't got any, well, haven't got any game that is when he was young. Obviously, the fourth one that is talking about, you know, when he was like young, young, you know, when he's still, you know, with his brother and stuff, but never really kind of afterward. So. Yeah, I guess it's like the gap, isn't it, in the in the yeah. game? So they're not stepping on the. I think it's a safe bet because they're not stepping on the game's toes. It's yeah, like, so it's like, yeah. I don't know if it works. You know who I really want to. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if anyone's seen it actually, but there is a um, like a like a, a, a fan made trailer spoof kind of thing. With I've seen this. Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Fillion. Yeah. But it's he wants that role so bad. He actually made his own yeah. version of the film. But it's really good. Like the action, mm. the action's really good. It's got the atmosphere of the game, like the tongue and cheekness of the game, and and like the action was really good. And it had a coherent plot for a, like a like a, a short. It's really good. I, I advise people to check it out and then tweet Nathan Fillion. I've ju- Nathan Fillion. I've just I've just looked him up. I think maybe a touch too old, but yeah, I think- depends. It depends. You could, in the same way, they're doing the. Um, Younger, and they're going to do the younger end of his life, of Nathan Drake's life. They could do it close to like he's retired and he gets dragged back into it for whatever reason. Well, you know, like you the know the standard the cliche, die well, yeah, hard. Yeah. Well, right, I say die hard. It's not just die hard. It's Bruce Willis. It's any <laughs> film with Bruce <laughs> Willis. Bruce Willis <laughs> <laughs> with the, the Maverick getting drawn, dragged back into it all. It's like Red. So they all retired and they come back in, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. isn't isn't that what Red even means? Like retired and dangerous, or something? extremely yeah, dangerous. Retired and extremely dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, say no. that age doesn't didn't stop Indiana Jones. That was on last night. Yeah, true. He must be sixty now. Sixty. And That's another film they got. Game. They making another one. Yeah, yeah. They oh, are they? That'd be his last yeah. one, though. I think because I don't think Harrison Ford can do another one. I think he'll eat too much. Quite old. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, How dare you <laughs> no, no, no. I just think it'd be too much for him. <laughs> I think he'd have to call it quits after that. <laughs> well, isn't that one of the reasons they? People. Door. They um do you have to do a spoiler <laughs> alert for a film that was released what nearly ten years ago? No no no. no. <laughs> okay. I, so. uh, I think that's part of the reason that he requested Han Solo be killed off was just because of his age and he he was getting on. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that's why he didn't want the um Yeah, I, I, I just think that was just too that's much. That's why he stopped. Him. It was like they don't even want to do Star Wars. Yeah. Too much. Uh, and 
I mean, there could be other reasons, like, uh, um, what's his name? Um, uh, the actor who played Obi Wan in the original trilogy. Um, uh, names just escaped me. Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. No, Scottish, he's right. no, he's the prequel trilogy. Oh, prequel, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean the originals. Um, it will come back to me. Alec Guinness. Yeah, Alec Guinness, yes. So yeah, Alec yeah. Guinness, that's him. Yeah, he hates the fact that that's what most people know him for now. Well, yeah, but it's but that's like but that's like any any sort of game or any film any sort of media to be honest where where it's got such a cult following like people know yeah but I, I think in, in in his case it's because he's done so much other stuff that should be good like uh, he was in Bridge on the River Choir I think yeah okay, okay. which is I, I can't say I've seen stuff. it myself but it's supposed to be an amazingly good film it's quite a famous war film yeah, yeah it's yeah. meant to be a very good war film and he, he, I think he probably won, knowing him, he won awards for it, and he's known for what was originally going to be a one-off space opera that was meant to be a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. Like they hadn't True. planned on the sequels at that point. He's a sir as well. Yeah, he's a he's a knight, I think, which doesn't surprise me. A lot of um, a lot of actors get knighted nowadays. Or, well, I, I say nowadays. Yeah, Bridge and River Choir. He's been loads, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. <clears throat> but he, he's he's very much from that generation of actors who was um like uh, the the super u- u- upper class clip voice. <laughs> yeah. Because that's how actors speak. He's from that like so he's <sighs> in a lot of classical films. But he's known for Star Wars. He's done actually he's loads of like really like highly rated films they're a bit older for a bit before our time now because like 1950s 1960s but like his one of his last things was yeah it was a bit of fun let's do Star Wars <laughs> yeah <laughs> a bit of fun when it like towards the end of his career and then that's what he's remembered for <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which is really oh, bad. oh crap I didn't intend for that because if you look at if you look at say um, Daniel Radcliffe Rupert Grint Emma Watson but you say that Harry Potter, Potter. You say those names and everyone immediately thinks Harry Potter. Yeah. And Rupert Grint has pretty much <laughs> left acting. I don't know anything else he's been in. Who? Emma Ron. Watson's kind of. She's done a she's, lot. She's done. She does a lot of. She. The thing is, she's a, a woman in Hollywood, and I, I don't want to sound sexist here, and I apologise if I do. But women in Hollywood tend to have a shorter shelf life. <laughs> Harder time, yeah. Yeah, they, they tend to struggle more, and um, not so much now. I, I think, I but think like, that's down to Hollywood more know. than them. Yeah, not so. It's not so much now, but maybe maybe in like. If you you tend the older you look, the more the harder you're going to find it to find work. But again, this depends that what kind of style, acting style that you're going for. That is like, true. If you um, like, for example, if you're looking, you know, if you're going for, like you said, those those actors. Actress looking or actor looking for like the, they are good looking, right? So if they're going for the sexy stuff, like you know, yeah, I mean, sure. But like, if you are, if you are really good at, you know, you could be sixties, seventies, still acting. Yeah, but, but it, yeah, it's just people and style. But, but she, but still, she's done loads of films. So she's been in yeah, like things and... like The Circle with Tom Hanks and stuff like that. People won't know what that is because yeah, <laughs> I bet no. the Netflix... I have never heard yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But what I have heard of and that I know she's in is she's in the new Beauty and the Beast remake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm couldn't... pretty sure it has some other big names in it. I'm pretty sure Dan like Stevens. it's got Sir Ian McKellen and things as well. Yeah, and, and Dan Stevens, who's in like um, was it tons of stuff. But like, <laughs> yeah, tons of stuff. Example, Abby. Uh, Abby. Legion, Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey, Legion, um, yeah, Legion. Is that the one with Paul Bettany, mm, or is that a different Legion? Because I think there might be a couple of films called Legion. There's a Legion there, TV a... series. Oh yeah, because there's a Legion TV series, which I think is based on Legion the film, and Legion the film stars Paul Bettany. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's in Downton Abbey. Um, Sense and Sensibility. Um, a bunch of other <laughs> stuff. 
A bunch of other stuff. The well, Sense estate. and Sensibility and Downton Abbey are both period dramas. Yeah, The Fifth Estate as well, which is the one with Benedict Cumberbatch. He was in that as well. Uh, by yeah, I've, I've heard of Downton Asage. Abbey. I've heard of I've heard of Sense and Sensibility, but I know nothing about it. Yeah. Um. He's been. And... A, yeah. He's going to be like the up and coming actor, I think. Yeah. And then <laughs> I've just realised we kind of got off topic from my original tangent about like people who are well known for one series you've got because you had Emerson and Rupert Grint and then you've got Dan Radcliffe who I can name two films that he's been in no three films that he's been in since Harry Potter or oh, challenge um, accepted Woman nope. in Black <laughs> Bonds and Now You See Me 2 are the okay, yeah, three yeah, that yeah. I can and Fair play. I know he's been in a lot more but it's almost exclusively indie stuff yeah, I've said that with distaste in my mouth. I, I I'm not sure why. That <laughs> indie stuff can be quite good, <laughs> and yeah, I, yeah. I think there are some very good in, independent films out there, but they are less well known. And to be fair, that's what he's found for himself, and that's the niche he's found, and that's what he enjoys. It's just he won't he won't he won't ever get known for it. And if he's but he probably doesn't need to that, though, because no. he probably got enough money to do it. He probably he probably just acting because he yeah. enjoys enjoying it. it. Doesn't well, need that's the money. The thing, I suppose. I think it's just that actors like Sir Alec Guinness and others prefer to... They don't like to be known for just one film or one series of films. They like to be known for... Their range. Their skill yeah. different roles. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, and their contribution to the industry in different roles. Yeah, because you've got Benedict Cumberbatch who played... I think his, his, the fir- his first major Corbett. role was probably Sherlock. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, he then he played Smaug. Smaug. I don't know how to pronounce the dragon's name. Oh, the dragon in yeah, yeah, the Hobbit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he also provides okay. the voice of Sauron in the Hobbit films. Oh, does he? Does yeah, he? he provides the voice of Sauron I as well. That. So I knew. He well, did, I didn't um, know he played acting. the dragon to begin with. <laughs> oh, I knew that. I knew the dragon, but I didn't know he did and, and um, then Sauron. He goes. He went on to play um, Khan in the second star in the J- second JJ Abrams Star Trek. And he's also played. He also plays Doctor Strange. Yes, also. And but he has a big range, though, and I don't think he'll because he's such a. Yeah, he's such wife, a but... good act, actor. But that's the thing. Like he's got a range of um, range Fairly of different things. Roles as well. But because of the stuff he's in, he's been in Sherlock, which has a pretty big cult following on Tumblr. Right, absolutely. Other <laughs> other question, morally questionable social media sites are available. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, he's been in he's been in the MCU he's been in um, Middle Earth films and he's been in Star Trek and what Four all that stuff films. has in common is they're all massive geek culture stuff and nerd stuff but the, like maybe less so Sherlock than the other three no don't say it you, you just well, careful, be careful so. with Sherlock fans. <laughs> well, that's the they thing. all hunt I, you I'm, I'm being careful because I technically fall into the category of Sherlock fans. So <laughs> you're, you're alienating yourself for your own community. <laughs> more, more of a Doctor Who fan. More of a Doctor Who fan. So when there's a crossover, that's what people want. People want a crossover. Doctor people Who have Sherlock. been asking for crossovers ever <laughs> since the pos- the, they realised that Stephen Moffat was writing both Doctor Who and Sherlock at the same yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think it will ever happen, especially now that. Right, I'm going to stop my. I'm going to stop myself now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because no. I know full well that the past two <laughs> series of Doctor Who have been controversial at best. Con- con- so I'm, yeah, maybe maybe we avoid that topic for now. <laughs> especially as we were originally talking about video games being turned into films, and now we're talking about Sherlock, the Sherlock series. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I suppose we called it rambling on for a reason. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. <laughs> um, but to go back to your point, like let me bring the conversation back with this amazing tangent. <laughs> so to bring back the point of like famous actors that you know for, like it's like when you say like Ashley Johnson is known for. Um, Ellie now if someone says Ashley Johnson the gaming community everyone goes oh Ellie from Last of Us or the thing is if someone says that to me I go oh Ashley from Critical Role oh, yeah, yeah or true or you say from or that yeah or what about um, if you say Nolan North so what do people remember him for 
Oh, Nolan North has a connection to Team Fortress 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not what, not what I expected. I was going to say, like, he's, he's he does, like, he does loads. He does, like, um, I think he did Desmond Miles. I think he does, he does anyway. Um, um, he's the, Chartered. Well, he I've, just, I've looked up. He's Desmond Miles in Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. Creed. And he's and also... He, um, Nathan Drake. Nathan Drake, yeah. Uh, he's the Penguin in Batman Arkham franchise. Yeah, he does. He does so much, but then he only gets he'll, he'll be getting remembered for one or two of the roles. Or, or what about Tara Strong? Everyone remembers her for. Uh, I've Quinn. never heard of her. Harley Quinn. <laughs> Harley Quinn in like eighty percent of the animated other. series. <laughs> well, I've I've just oh, looked. Batman. So Nolan North, I'm looking through his stuff. Young Justice. I mentioned that DC show I was talking about. He's in that. Was he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's also in an X Men show. He was in Ben 10. He's in, He's in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Nolan North's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, to be fair, depending on the community you mention him to, yeah, he's true. even in Star Trek Into Darkness. Oh, really? Yeah, he, huh. is, he is admittedly a small role. He is the helmsman of one of the ships. Oh. But that okay. is. <laughs> He's still in it, and no one ever noticed. <laughs> He's the glue between all of our points. He's also uh, the fish in the on. Cat in the Hat video game. Okay, there will be someone who knows <laughs> Nolan North as the fish from the Cat in the Hat game. Wow. wow! Why am I not even surprised that he is the he is there is a Cat in the Hat game? Yeah, <laughs> but I, I do get what you mean there. Like, like it does depend on the community and. and, and some actresses and actors are like known for one more than others, even though they have like so much range. Like especially voice actors, they do so so much. Like just as you like you're saying to Nolan North, Tara Strong was equally about the same amount of characters, <laughs> if not more. But everyone goes, "Oh, it's Harley Quinn in yeah. the animated series," and that's how she's remembered. And actually, to be fair, she's almost embraced that that character because I think um, Margot Robbie, who did the live action version in Suicide Squad, or Brad's Prey. <laughs> Take your pick. But yeah, I think she even sort of said that she unintentionally based her, you know, portrayal on that, on what, on what Tara Strong did. Yeah, yeah. But it, when when like a voice actor does something like that and makes their role so good, especially in like games, animated series, then everyone tries to copy them. They don't try and make it original because they don't want to. Too many people like the character. Does that make sense? Mm. So, I, I just want to bring this background to Nolan North very slightly so Nolan North yeah. voiced the TF2 soldier and engineer in one of their animations and I am going somewhere with this I've just discovered on my Twitter feed that Rick May who was the original voice actor for the soldier in the games has passed away yeah that's a shame within that's the good. past 24 hours oh. and I don't I don't want to talk about this too much but it was due to COVID-19 but I, I just I don't know I felt it was something that um, the we, we are a gaming channel predominantly so I figured it was something that should probably be mentioned yeah I didn't I didn't I wasn't aware unfortunately so. I, I follow a lot of TF2 stuff so yeah that's a that's very sad to hear and hopefully uh, it's like family's doing well in this time yeah best wishes for them Sorry, I've kind of no, dampened right. the mood somewhat there. <laughs> I no, do no, apologise. No, that's all right. That's fine. No, no, but no, no. Hopefully, his family's doing well, and um, the rest of their family is keeping safe. And and I obviously it will be a hard time. But then they, I, I guess, they'll have a lot of support in the communities that will yeah. be able to provide them. So I hope they take some comfort in that. I mean, um, judging what, from the the fan art of, that's already going up on Twitter, I'd say that he he certainly well made an impact on a lot of people. Well, that's it. But that's good. And then that, that's like, I think that's all. Uh, that's what these like actors and voice actors can do. They they make an impact, and that kind of brings it back to. Sorry to jump straight back to our point, <laughs> but um, it brings it back to like the impact that like Tara Strong made. No one's ever going to create a new one because it will be too different. And people won't like it. So, mm. so I think, um, and, and it's the same with like, um, 
any well, you say well. people won't create a new one of anything because well, people they try. <laughs> don't want to change the originals. But I, I, I'm going to direct you towards the Aladdin remake and Will Smith as the genie. No, to be, to be fair, because that it. got a lot of criticism when it was first announced. To be fair, he did a good job. Um, I, uh, I think he didn't want to step on Robin Williams' yeah, toes and... because you can't beat Robin Williams. Yeah, you and can't... he did a good job by not being Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what you need to do, really. Yeah, exactly. If Will Smith tried to copy Robin Williams, that would have, that would have been brought awful. forward a lot of outrage. Yeah, and that would have been awful. <laughs> because he's not Robin Williams. And I think that's and like that's like saying like Margaret Robbie based it on the Harley Quinn. She based her personality, but she didn't try and copy everything about it. She tried to make it her own enough to make it different. Yeah, so I guess it still becomes an interpretation rather than a direct, you know, a direct emulation copy. of. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but it's an interpretation of um, Robin Williams' Aladdin or an interpretation of Tara Strong's Harley Quinn rather than an interpretation of the original character in, like, as written. Um, when do I get to be included in the channel's intro? When <laughs> did we dis- did we discuss this I've last just, week? We might. Dis- did, I don't know if we discussed I, I wasn't it on in the podcast. I wasn't on the podcast last week. That's you. Oh, that, maybe it was the that. week before. Then you missed it. Then you missed it. I don't know if we discussed it in the podcast or um or afterwards the podcast. But we're basically saying the reason we can't add you in the, on the the channel start is because it's um our friend that does the oh. um art artwork. Oh. And he, he... I, I, I feel betrayed <laughs> and left out. <laughs> and he did the artwork ages ago, and then um, he just did like our headshots first of all, and then stitched it into. Once we got some videos up, he he did like a. I didn't know he was going to do it, but he stitched it into like his it like our intro. And, and which ca- definitely is not stolen from any major film company. I don't know what anyone's talking about. No, I'm I'm not. I'm going to say it's stolen. I'm going to say it's a homage. <laughs> Some might say it's it's, it's a homage. It's a it's a it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a homage to a we'll leave it as that. No, 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 you have to say it's a, a homage to a marvelous <laughs> intro. It's like the Tara Strong of the world. We're not copying; we're emulating. No, we're, we're interpreting. No, we're not emulating. We're interpreting. <laughs> <laughs> we're interpreting an intro as a homage. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's why, and then. I don't know how long it took, but it must have taken a long time, but it's a good intro, and we've just kept it ever since. But obviously, it'll take a lot to change it. <laughs> I expect you to do better. I know. But we, until <laughs> we make money. <laughs> <laughs> when we make money, I'll pay someone to do, add you in. <laughs> <laughs> so, in about 20 years' time, then? 20, 20 to 50 years' time. <laughs> we are not optimistic people. No, nah, but I think... I think we're sort of reaching our hour mark. Um, I don't know if anyone's thought of any topics or. Um, well, I was thinking, talking like gaming in connection to, not I, I suppose the real world, but that's the wrong way of putting it. Gaming in connection to the general public, shall we say? So gaming is general public. So. So yeah. how how people react to seeing it more prevalent in the media and things. Ah, so like more public gaming. So like you've got streamers, yeah, like... you've got. Uh... Well, not just Streaming, online uh, as well. You've e- got esports. Like, rather big esports now. Like, like, like the past couple of years have had a Fortnite World Championship, and I mean, I do not play Fortnite, but it made it onto my local radio state on our local radio station. So that's no, that sounds like a good sort of topic. To, that's got to be worth something for no, 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 to I bring think, up. Yeah, I think that's a good sort of topic. I think because um, we're reaching the hour mark, I think it's a good place to end this episode, and we'll touch back on your topic next week. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this podcast. Remember to leave a like, subscribe. If you subscribe, click the bell to get notified of upcoming videos. Um, keep up to date on our Facebook and Twitter pages for more girls in the gaming world. And keep tuned as we have a bunch more exciting videos coming this week and hopefully in the next couple of weeks as well. Keep you entertained during the lockdown. So that's goodbye from us now. <laughs> Goodbye. See you guys later. later.